Hello, everybody. Jessica Ostrom here, and I am coming to you guys live so much more than just Second Sunday right now. And you're you're probably not shocked. I'm sure a lot of your um, your teachers and your mentors have been producing a lot of content lately. And I'm not that much different. It feels like the downloads are coming in hot, coming in hot. Well, I thought uh, that I would give you guys a class or a quick video um, that I will also be sharing in our non-duality masterclass. Uh, you guys are going to get the tip of the iceberg. And they're going to get the whole shabam. So uh, I figured, you know what, if they need it, you need it. And I know that I particularly have been working through this myself. So when we're looking at, at the whole world, COVID woke a third of the planet up. I don't know if you're aware of that, but a third of the planet is awake and or at least waking up. But if you've ever seen a newborn, right, a newborn sleeping, it's like, oh, my God, they're awake, awake. Oh, they're back asleep. Oh, they're awake, awake. Now they're back asleep. It's probably some people that, you know, right, like that they're. They're woke and then they're awake and then they're really sleeping. The conversation gets like a scratch, like, Err! you know, you're flowing. The stream of consciousness is there. And then all of a sudden they say something like that's just totally misaligns with with literally being awake. Um, and it usually comes from some old belief or fear or indoctrination. And that's what I really want to talk to you guys about today is since the planet woke up, it seems like every person the age of like 15 to 30 is become a law of attraction guru. Now, um, coming from a real OG, I love it. I, I love that. I love that that my kids at age group of, you know, my 28 year old and my 26 year old, my 16 year old and my 10 year old are aware of what law of attraction is. Right. But at the same time, I think that the boat that is being missed here is that what comes before law of attraction is law of vibration. And library, li, li, law of vibration is much, much, much more important than pizzly wizly little law of attraction. And here's why. Because law of vibration states that whatever chronically the vibration or the momentum of energy gathered, what frequency, okay? Like when we look at law of attraction, it's like what you're going to get in regard to the vibration. So when you're doing your little like manifestation rituals right and your little affirmations you're probably like man this is frustrating it's not it's not working and here's the crazy part is it might have worked in the past but you are on a whole different playing field right now you know again those of you who are doing this work you just hit the major league so this isn't like good job you struck out like it's like nope get back up there and and this really where we are in the times right now it's like everybody that has been working on this bridge of awakening enlightenment is is being called into the major leagues right now and the coaches are a lot more tough here and they don't care about your boo-boo on your knee they're like put some dirt on it and get out there and so if that is you you're probably like wondering why all of your ease and flow has all of a sudden become a challenge and you feel like a rookie again in your own awakening journey, in your own spiritual journey. Well, here's the reason why is because the law of vibration states, right? That which vibrates attracts. And I have always taught you guys that you're vibrating three different ways. All right. You're vibrating from the three counterpoints or that triangle energy within you that is based in the separation of the third dimension, which means that when you come down into an incarnation, you're the entire universe trying to fit in any little bitty living space. And when you try to demonstrate that, it's like, don't do that. Don't say that. Don't feel that. So we compartmentalize. We disillusion. We kind of pop out of ourselves and we learn how to navigate with an alter ego aspect. And instead of intuition, we download the idea of judgment. Judgment is self-preservation. Like, am I safe to do this? Am I safe to feel this? Like, am I allowed to be this way? So instead of working towards integration and becoming back into ourselves, we literally spend most like half of our life, right? Until your first Saturn return. Um, you really like are, are just getting very really proficient at wearing masks and people pleasing or studying or, you know, diving into something that literally rejects and abandons you until then you go through your Saturn return, which usually kicks your ass pretty good. And then that's kind of like your awakening. Even Jesus woke up right around his, well, fully integrated around his Saturn return. That's when he had to finish his shadow work. Okay, so well, that's the word on the streets, all right? So when we're looking at this law of vibration, we want to look at the fact that, you know, law of vibration is looking at 
at, at all of your vibration and then it's accumulating it into an algorithm. Kind of like what you see on your social media is what you search for or what you pay attention to the most or what you are engaging in the most. Things that you're not like, oh, how come I haven't seen so-and-so in a long time? It's because you haven't really been looking at that. So it gets filed in the back, right? So your algorithm is, is like your, your social media is literally like your vibration. Doesn't mean you like what you're seeing, okay? It just means what you're paying attention to, what you are reacting to, what you are resisted to. So anything that has a charge. So when you look at my emotional tone scale that I created for my students, I broke it down into high vibrations and then mid-range vibrations and then low vibrations. And so boredom is kind of the cusp. And you can imagine what's above boredom, right? Excitement, it's like, or even contentment, boredom, uh, uh, contentment, excitement, and then joy and all those wonderful, you know, laughter. And then when you go below boredom, you start to get ornery or you start to get a little desperate, you know? That's when you're kind of like, I, am I bored or hungry? And then you're making bad choices. So once you go below boredom, you start to go into lower vibrations, which means your vibe gets heavier, which means you become more dense, thicker, right? And not in the good kind of thick, not in the cake way, in the thick way, in the, you know, when you think of someone who's ignorant, you call them thick, right? You're thick, right? So when you look at vibration, you become more unconscious, okay? The, the heavier your vibration gets. Now, mainstream music, is set up to hypnotize you into a lower vibration because anything below boredom is where you can be controlled, okay? Anywhere below boredom, I'm gonna say it again, my class knows when I say it twice, remember it, that you can be controlled or hypnotized, okay? So when you're looking at what vibration you are chronically in, right, and you're the part of you, the three compartmentalized parts of you that are acting in separate you know, realities until you integrate into one, until your alchemies become the alchemist, okay? You are navigating in three different vibrations and you might not be aware of it. So the lowest vibration is going to be your ego or the edging out God vibration that has been taught to judge, to survive, and to, you know, act in others' behalf, to be selfless, to criticize self, to be judgmental of self, to even hurt self, to protect others, and it is the lowest vibration of all of you, right? Now, in music, you want a harmony of low vibrations and high vibrations, which is true, which is why when you do integrate, you're not all going to be in the same vibe. You're going you're gonna to work in a harmonic expression, which means even your density is going to work with your higher self once you integrate. So that low vibration of your, what you're in is, is telling a very old story. It is telling the story. It's like a bad country song where you lose your, your mama and your dog dies and your girlfriend gets beheaded, right? Bad country song. So that's going to be the lowest vibration. And the, the way that the vibes happen or get stuck, because again, we're, we're like weather. Like I look at emotion like weather. It's hot, it's cold, especially if you live in the Midwest. It's bipolar here. We get 70 degrees and then it's 20. It's snowing and raining and then it's hot. And that's literally like a child, isn't it? Or a woman, right? So very emotionally stirred up is normal, really. I mean, what some call crazy, Mother Nature, we call normal, right? Depending on where you are on the planet, okay? And we're in the middle, which is the core. So you're going to get all of it. So at least I am. So looking at this idea of low vibration, okay? Anything below boredom, which means if you were bored and you didn't get inspired somehow, then you went and got desperate. You ate motion, you emotionally ate, or you slummed with some booty call guy that you like really don't like, but no, <laughs> you know? So it's like, something's going to happen down there. And that's when your vibration starts to kind of act as a vacuum, you start pulling your other higher vibrations down instead of you going, you know what, I'm bored. I need to go get inspired. I need to get myself around a higher vibration so that I can be inspired to be, to do, to act instead of I'm bored. Let me see what's going on down below in the Henri world and let me drop down. Okay. And this is where then you give away your power, your desperation, you're making bad choices. This is where fear is, resentment, guilt, shame, and eventually loss. Okay. And so you're, you're going to be getting heavier down here. 
Now your mid range vibration is going to be your body. Your body's like, we're alive, we're alive, we're alive, or so it is trying to be. And it's working in your different emotions to, to, to like figure out how to be the most alive. Oh, we're scared. Great. We're alive. You know, we're excited. Great. We're alive. Your body is it's the vibration of I am, I, I am, I'm here. Right. <laughs> and, and so then you have this higher consciousness, which is isness, which is I, I am all that I am. And it's already done. So if you look at the three vibrations, the way I teach it in class is it's need, want, is, okay? Because it's like need, I need this. I need to get skinny. I need more money. I need him to hear me. I need them to see me. I need this word to end. I need to be enlightened. I need to talk to my spirit guides. I need to call a psychic. I need to blah, 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 okay? Down here, need, 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 which means lack, which means heavy, which means dense, which means battery, on E. It's like you looking for your charger at 2%. That's need. Okay. Then you get into the want and it's the body. It's the inner child. It's like, I want to experience. I want to be a real boy. I want to be a real girl. I want to play. I want playmates. I want playgrounds. I want expression. I want to run in this body. I want to eat cool food. I want to kiss boys. I want to hug. I want to be loved. I want to be seen and heard, right? All of these things. Want, 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 which is desire. Okay. Now here's the thing. Higher self is like, yes, and yes. Okay, good. The lower vibrations are going to get heavy and heavy until you hit the bottom. And at the bottom, you're going to realize that you're not broken or glass. You're plastic. You're plastic. You're malleable, which means, did you know your brain is malleable? So you don't break, you bend. Okay, so that's why most of you feel like you don't fit anywhere. It's because someone bent your puzzle piece in the wrong shape. And every time you try to hook up with something, it's like it's not hooking in. So you're bent, you're not broken. So what happens is the higher self will wait lovingly because time doesn't exist for you to rock bottom with your heaviness, with your emotional eating, with your overspending, with your, you know, a, with your comparison, with you watching hours of other people live their life. And so you drift away into the nothing and it waits until you hit your rock bottom. And then it's like, rejoice. And the body's like, 911, 911, 911, right? Uh, we got to live. We got to live. We got to live. So now all attention units are on this void, this heaviest place that you could get to. And the only place to come up is up, right? The only thing to do is come up. So this is usually when you start to kind of work together is when the heaviest part of you pulls the rest of you down. Okay. Or when the lightest part of you can pull everybody up. And so really the middleman, which is the body is all you've got people. OK, and you need to know which team it's working for. Is it working for the fun, cool, you know, mom or the narcissistic dad or what? Like you've got to see what your, your what your body is tuned into. Right. Because you want to know where your giant ass magnet is. It's in your blood. Your blood is magnetic. OK, you're electric and magnetic. You are literally streaming live that which you desire. 24 hours a day, you're also streaming what you have, what has happened to you and what you believe you are not. And you also streaming what you already have and already are. So when you are focused, okay, in an environment that is 24 hours a day streaming hypnosis on you, hope you know that. Everything you eat, everything you read, everything you do, everything you see, everything you pay attention to, everything, even if you're trying not to pay attention to it, that's a form of paying attention because it's law of resistance. Okay, now we got law of resistance, the ugly stepbrother, right, in there who's constantly throwing shade and salt into our game, all right? So look at him like, like this, vibration is going to be the accumulation, your algorithm. So law of attraction is going to take your chronic focus, your chronic focus. Now look at focus three ways, what you're thinking about, what you're doing, what you're wanting, what you're needing, what you are peace at, with peace with, what you are struggling with. And it's going to mishmash that into a potpourri or a recipe and it's going to feel like your manifestations are eating pumpkin pie that someone put pepper in. All right, you're going to be like, okay, this isn't what I wanted. Well, it's bittersweet. And then it's hard to be grateful because gratitude we know will get you into the higher range, 
right? Because it's appreciation, which is a finance term, and you bought into it. And but that's not how society works. So the society is like a slow drip hypnotic space. Now the word hypnosis means, right? It means the act of falling asleep. Like, like I even, I even looked, you know me, I love words so much. Uh, I gotta find this for you because it's so awesome. Uh, where is it? I think I saved it in my Google file. Okay. Hypnosis or hypnotic or hypnotic, the 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 condition of sleep oasis. Okay, I mean, like, look at this. You can't make this up. So, and I'm always pushing my students. You know, you're hypnotized. Go get unhypnotized, and then rehypnotize yourself as commander and creator, right? And I'm going to show you guys basically how we do that at the end of this video. So, when you're looking at your hypnotic state. If you've ever seen like the parlor tricks or the magicians that can like, you know, get a crowd going and usually there's a little alcohol because it's kind of like a show and the hypnotherapist can literally pick out in the crowd or call people up that they know are susceptible, receptive or resistant. OK, because those are going to be great people to be hypnotized. So you injustice pioneers out there, I have news for you. You're easily hypnotized, okay? So be careful if you're like, injustice, right? <laughs> if you're neutral, it's very difficult for you to be hypnotized. But if you are in some sort of positive or negative charge, then you are in a current and a flow state and you can get swept up into a flow or fear state or flow state, that which you are in harmony or vibrational alignment with. OK, so let's say there's a magician up there and this magician is telling you you're a chicken. OK, and all of a sudden you're looking around and people are acting like a chicken and you're like, what the heck? Now, what's happening to them is they're going into a rested, altered state, like almost like an idle state. They're their conscious awareness and the subconscious mind is being directed by the magician. Well, if you break down the word imagination. It's an it's a nation of um, of magicians. I imagine my nation. Okay, so what is hypnosis? Vibration, imagination, pretending, intention. All these are like my favoriteest words. Okay, if you look at the word tend, like I like to break words down. Look at the word tend. Right, it, it means to nurture or care for. Right, but it also it there god there's so many meanings but it also means to put together okay so when you're looking at intention you're putting together your vision you're putting together your imagination right if you look at pretend it's like preparation for the intention and you're like oh pretend we're adults we can't pretend right if you're not pretending you're not going to survive what's happening out here guaranteed you will not make it if you are paying attention to what is happening outside because even though we are in a big transition from caterpillar to butterfly, when you are in your cocoon state, you are bloated, you're heavy, you're scared, you don't know what's going to happen, you don't know, really know who you are, and so you're looking for answers. And if you happen to look in the wrong direction and see the old world dying, then you're going to be hypnotized into that, and you're going to go with that story even though you might be a pioneer for the light, you might work for the Galactic Federation on your side time, right? You're probably not getting your paycheck, but you're over there and then you're worried about this, you're being split again. And see this chess game we're playing, you guys. This chess game that we're in right now, this 3D to 5D reality, which is the middleman, me, myself, and I, 3D, ego, the middleman, the bridge, the body. Hello, your bridge is this body. 5D, right, is the integration, the embodiment of higher self, higher self. Let, let me scooch in here. Let me get in here, right? Like, get out, try to make room. This is why we're doing so much trauma work this year. This is why we're doing so much body work. This is why we're doing so much, like, influential, influential focus work is because higher self is like, I'm trying to get in this body that's full of trash. And I'm just like this light, beautiful Garden of Eden here. and there's a bunch of trash in that house, right? And it's been hypnotized, programmed. 
See, a lot of the times when you look at quantum healing and quantum theory, you're, you're, you're realizing that you are quantum entangled to a program, a pattern, um, a person, place, or thing that reminds you of some sort of pain or pleasure, okay? And you're going to be entangled in into that energy. So when you're trying to use law of attraction to override the body's program or the body that is in a hypnotic state, you're going to burn your engine out. It's like driving 150 miles an hour with your e-brake on. You're not going to be able to sustain that. And this is why your affirmations, this is why your meditations that are like focused on your vision board don't last very long because you burn out your own resistance. This is my favorite cup to demonstrate this. False. Here's why. Okay. So when you like get into your guru state and you meditate, and you, you decide, okay, I'm going to affirm. I'm going to put post-its all over my house. Like I am abundant and I am worthy. Well, while you have not changed any of your programming or your, your hypnotic um, imprints, okay? If you have not taken the imprints off of yourself, then your subconscious, when you do affirm, affirming and, and you do like your, your chanting and your mantras, this is what your subconscious mind in the voice of this guy, if you've watched The Office, which I highly recommend, it's hilarious, that you're getting the false and you're getting his face in your subconscious, like false. So you're affirming, I'm abundant, false. Why? Well, because your body is under a hypnotic trance still. Every time you look at your bank account, you're hypnotized, okay? Every time you, or you look at your partner who you have resentment with, hypnotized. Every time you think of, heartbreak hypnotized see a, hypnot a hypnotherapist will hypnotize you once and then it will use it as a command so i and i'm, I'm going to put one of my favorite hypnotherapists in our in our class um our class work for you to study his work because i mean why re why reinvent the wheel okay i'm a scientist not a hypnotherapist right okay so even though i am and i was i was and i had the honor of training in dolores cannon QHHT's last classroom before she crossed over. Thank you, Dolores, right? We got some magic out of that. And if you've ever had a QHAT session, excuse my ADHD moment here, that was a squirrel, is that we are taking you into three distinct lives that are still under hypnosis so that you can unattach or reconnect to a story that is pulling you back, right? And this is what I always ask my students. If you can't hold a pure positive vision for 168 seconds, which is quite a bit of a time, then you are under a hypnotic spell from some command that something, someone, or somewhere has over you, which means there's a, every ounce of trauma unresolved, it has a hypnotherapist behind it holding a command. Have you ever noticed that it's not what your partner says, it's the tone of voice? Okay, it's not what the lyrics are saying, it's how they're sung. It's not what's happening in the movie, it's the soundtrack, right? And this is why we use in our apothecary, everything that we touch has the element of sound and light because things as they get denser and heavier can change into absorbing form, like fat, is what toxins live in, right? Water, it can change into steam, right? So remember, ice, water, steam is your ascension process. Well, when you're looking at this idea of fat or density, it's, it's heavy and it holds, it's like container. So 75 trillion cells, yes, you're supposed to be 70% water. I've yet to see someone in my office that is 70% water because of the dehydration hypnotism that is going on for you to stay hungry and starving all the time because then you're in a hypnotic state. So back to on course here. So if there's a magician up there and he says, you know what, your name is Chuck, even though your name is Steve, you will literally fight him later on in the afternoon. Like he could go an hour and hasn't even spoken to you he could call you by the wrong name and you could correct him after an hour. So time doesn't exist in hypnosis. What happens in hypnosis is that the command is broken or the command is stopped. So this is why we get uh, addicted to our abusers. 
Okay, this is why we get addicted to people because they've put us under a hypnotic spell, okay, based on a charge, either a, a, a an agreed influence, influencers, agreed influence, okay? We were receptive, would be what we needed something that they were saying or we were interested or we were in an altered state, half asleep, half awake, theta, alpha, we're learning, okay? So when you are in under a hypnotic state, your whole entire body will go against what it is you desire. So your job is to figure out what vibration is hypnotized that is probably, I mean, you could have been hypnotized when you were two years old when someone said you look silly dancing and now you can't dance in public. You know, the number one fear is public speaking. Why? Because we're ashamed and guilt and in childhood, usually with a tone, like, don't do that. Think about it. If I have a two-year-old, right? And and they're being inappropriate somehow, or they're being loud or whatever. And I go, I go, honey, you look so amazing. Could we use a little bit of a quieter voice? And then we're, we're in a different place. I want you to just let it rip. Or you look like an idiot right now. You're embarrassing yourself. Okay. So the tone of voice. So what makes a hypnotherapist a hypnotherapist? You're probably wondering, oh, where do I get trained to do this? Confidence. The confidence and authority of someone's voice. This is why your doctors have you hip under hypnosis. This is why your gurus, because they are so confident in the tone of their voice that you're like, I believe you. I want to believe you. Okay. Or impact, right? Remember resistance, unconsciousness, boom, car accident. The nurses are talking about something that's going into your subconscious. All right. Like when I had my kids, I had a zero talking birth plan. Do not talk when I am under hypnosis giving birth. And I do not want my children programmed during pain. Okay. Yes, I was raised as a hippie. So you understand that every single time that you are scared, okay, angry, you are in resistance, you are curious, okay, you are worried, you are uncertain, right? When you are shamed and guilt. You are totally under the influence of anything you see, okay? This is why you're on Facebook at two o'clock in the morning spending $40 on whatever because it influenced your unconscious state. So theta is one of your superpower brainwaves that can take you into your Akashic Records, it can take you sailing. It can take you into all kinds of choice. It is actually where we go to get re-hypnotized with higher self, okay? Like reparented, healed, the same place. I always say what turns it on, turns it off. The same place, you lost your power. So first seven years, you are in theta. So you're under hypnosis. This is why when you get unconscious or you get tired or hungry, so and so is like, you sound just like your dad because you have been hypnotized by people, places, and things when you are susceptible, when you are hungry, when you are worried, when you were below boredom, you have been hypnotized. And this is why you could be enlightened, be like, I just spoke to Jesus personally in my meditation and it was amazing. You come out, you lose all your dopamine, you lose all your minerals, especially magnesium after me a meditation, and you flatline, and all of a sudden you're terrified of your bank account, right? You slip back into the hypnosis. And this is why when you're talking to someone and they're like, wow, this person is like, oh, got it. And then all of a sudden they say something just completely asleep. That's like, what the heck? So that part of them is under hypnosis, okay? So the parts of you that are going to be under the most hypnosis are your security and your heart. This is how we get trapped, guys. That's why I said your heart strings are going to hold you in 3D. That's going to be your final challenge there, okay? So think about this. So think about that and think about when you are under hypnosis, you are trying to find you, but you believe your name is Chip. Okay, you believe that money is going to make you lose your house, even though your infinite possibilities just 20 minutes ago in your meditation, 
If you're not willing to accept that there are parts of you that are under hypnotic control, right? And the people who are hypnotizing you, the things that are hypnotizing you, it's all sound based. It's all vibration based. This is why I'm always saying eyes on your own paper. Stop comparing yourself in social media. Stop looking for influencer and become your inspired version of yourself. If you are not the center of the universe, you are under someone else's universe. If you are not creating your own reality, something else is creating your reality. Now, we have left our bodies to this hypnotic game our whole lives until we awaken. And then 5% of us is really doing the work, while 75 trillion cells are literally moving to the beat of this hypnotic imprint. And so when we are going to deprogram someone, we're not trying to program them into my belief systems. We're trying to bring them back to factory settings, which means the them that they chose to be in this incarnation with their dreams, their desires, their heart space, their, their unique spark, their God spark within them. Bring them back to that before mom and dad and society and religion and school and the guy down the street who said you have a big nose and the guy that left you at the altar and you know, the, the gal that talked behind your back in seventh grade, like those people still have you under hypnotic control. And here's how I know when I take someone into hypnosis, they always tend to go to the same stories. Okay. The same stories or the same timelines or the same past lives in a lot of ways, because the imprint is still under hypnosis. And this is what Dolores Cannon's work is about. This is what my work is about. This is what Joe Dispenza's work is about. This is what Greg Braden's work is about. This is what Bruce Lipton's work is about. And this, and many other teachers like this, okay, that we're working to deprogram you from the matrix. All right. Now, how do you know which parts of you are programmed under hypnosis? Like, where do you believe your name is Chip? All right. Well, what do you fight against? What do you like? What's infuriating you? What triggers you? What what you what do you, who do you feel like can harm you? What do you think that that this is a holographic experience? This is virtual reality. Do you really think that someone can hurt you here? If so, that part of you is under hypnosis. Okay. And what we're doing in our non-duality masterclass this year is we are unpacking all of this with neutrality. That's what non-duality is. It's like, okay, all right, you guys are hypnotherapists. Well, guess what? My imagination means I am magician. So there you go. But you have to learn how to become a magician of your own reality, right? You have to become the hypnotherapist of your own virtual reality. So when you're obsessed with someone, oh, I got to get my strings cut. Good luck. You're under hypnosis. That string is going to go regrow, okay? Just like a snake's tail is going to regrow, that string's not going away until you deprogram the part of you that is under hypnosis, okay? And what puts you under hypnosis is when you are in a lower vibration. This is why when you are not feeling good, when you are hungry, when you are like not connected to the stream, when you do not feel the flow, when you do, when you are not attached to nature, this is where you should be really governing with solid boundaries who and what you are taking in. Because one thing about this game that's very interesting, it's kind of like, and I've said this before, it's kind of like Dracula. They have to ask for permission to hypnotize you. OK, they cannot with free will laws. It even helps us with the dark energy here. They cannot hypnotize us unless we give them a thumbs up. Now, when you listen to the music, that's a thumbs up. You may be like, I hate this song. And then two weeks later, you're singing it. OK, you may be like, Psh, man, I hate that microwave, but I'm going to use it because it's fast. All right. <laughs> like, oh, man, this is crappy water, but I got to drink it. So you are saying yes, even when you take that call of that sister-in-law that just bleeds you freaking dry, you're saying yes to that influence. And she is hypnotizing you to turn into your healer. Oh, I've got to be a healer. I've got to be a people pleaser. Okay. So if you are not aware of where you are under hypnosis, well, you're not going to be able to affirm and change your belief systems because they're not under your command. So to get your subconscious back under your command, you have to look at who hypnotized you, what hypnotized you, all right? And so I have, if you've noticed 
and I, I, I love nerding out about this stuff. Everything that is, is in our holographic experiences is in seven layers, seven layers. Here's your, here's your secret sauce here. Seven layers of skin, right? Seven days of creation, seven stages of alchemy, seven la layers of, of, gar of farming, okay? Seven stages of manifestation, yeah, seven deadly sins. Well, I'm going to give you the seven P's of mastering your own, me, myself, and I. All right. So the and and I've been giving these in my class, but they're going to be taking a master class. They're taking method acting classes. They're taking hypnotherapy classes this year in our non duality because you have to step into I am magician, an army of magicians. You have to lead this new world in your imagination because the kingdom of heaven is inside of you, which means that the new world is actually inside of you. So you're going to have to pretend. You're going to have to practice. You're going to have to prepare. So the seven P's of dehypnotizing yourself and rehypnotizing yourself to higher self, right? That badass God spark that you feel deep inside of you that has a purpose bigger than paying your bills, okay? And going on a one trip a year, okay? That purpose inside of you, there's another P, okay, is... The idea of first planning, like, okay, I'm under hypnosis. I don't know who has, who has my consciousness, but even my affirmations, my meditations are not budging. This is a really strong hypnotic loop, okay? Now, the reason why you stay under hypnosis for so long is because, yes, mom could have been your abuser and she could be deceased. But what happens is if you're under hypnosis, it's a frequency that puts you under the hypnosis. And there's actual trigger words in hypnosis that we use to, to hypnotize you and unhypnotize you, all right? One of the hypnotic words is try. Try means trauma. I'm trying, try harder, okay? Can't is a trigger word. I can't help you, okay? The word no is the ultimate hypnotic word of separation right? It immediately makes you all kinds of crazy, okay? Um, remember is a positive hyp hypnotic word, but it also can be bad. Remember when you were in eighth grade and, or remember that you're God, you see? So it's all in the tone of voice here, all right? So getting back to our P's. So first we've got to plan, like, okay, plan, acceptance. This is where I am. It's kind of like a farmer getting a plot of land and being like, okay, I've got to plan this because you are a farmer of your own new world that's sitting inside of you. You're going to follow exact steps of farming here, exact steps of alchemy here, exact steps of days of creation, exact days, what I call the peas. Okay. The peas. So the next one is posture. Now it's yes, posture. But it's the confidence, because as soon as you become confident, you become a hypnotherapist. If I walked into a room and nobody knew what the hell was going on, neither did I, but I was like, I'm going to pretend I do. And everybody's like, where's the exit? And I'd be like, that was right here. If I were to say that, everybody would look over there with certainty that I knew what I was doing. Okay, so it's confidence that actually creates the hypnotherapist. Or when you're a little kid, it might not be confidence, but it could be authority. All right. So authority and confidence are a fine line in the idea of hypnotherapy. So if you're not confident, right, you're always going to be looking for someone who is. Yeah. You might be not confident in your joy, but that's why your twin flame is full of joy. And now you're obsessed with them because they were confident in the thing you were lacking. All right. That, so posture is really about postulating. And postulating is about kind of a summonsing or evoking within you. And posturing, I have my literally my class wearing a posture strap because it puts you into this idea of where your heart is expanding out instead of contracting in and hiding. We want to be commanding our reality, right? So we are posturing, we are postulating, so planning, postulating, posturing. I am the character. Yeah, I might have 75 trillion cells that are like, but during this P process, I am going to shake that energy awake. Okay. That part of you is asleep. That's why you go gorilla old school. I'm going to punch someone, even though you meditate with love and light. All right. 
your your third your third P here is to pretend. Pre intention. Okay. Get your body into the state of being. Like when kids are like, Mom, look, I'm a dinosaur. I've got a T-Rex. You're like, wow, you really look like a T-Rex. And then they start making the noise and you're like, whoa, I really believe you there. <laughs> and, and they are now becoming that. So you have to pretend, which means pre-intend, which means you have to start teaching your body who this chick is, who this dude is. Okay. You got to walk around like you know what's going on instead of like, what's happening? Okay. You've got to pretend, pre-intention. All right. The next one is you got to plant that seed, plant that seed, plant that seed. It's already in you. Ladies, it's in your wombs. Guys, it's in your testes. All right. That seed is within you. You've got to birth it. All right. So by planting the seeds, you are establishing discipline, routine. OK, you are getting consistent because once you plant a seed, if I'm a farmer, if I plant a seed and I just forget about it, what happens to it? Well, it stays underground and dies or something eats it or just hibernates until someone pays attention to it or until it gets into the light, right? Like life cycle and says, F you, life will find a way I'm growing without you. Okay, so that happens too. But your seed, once it's planted, it's your job to be consistent, disciplined and routine, which means water. That means water. If I need to grieve and get some of this fertilizer to start stirring the pot, it will. All right. So once you plant that seed, then you're going to grieve. You're going to start you're going to start paying attention to all the things that have not served you. Once you plant the seed is when you start taking back your hypnotic power is because you've got to tend to this seed like it's a newborn boundaries. Nobody touch my seed. OK, you're not worth it. You I settled for you in 2022. OK, goodbye. Right. You start eating well because you have a seed. It's like a mother. No, 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 I'm not drinking alcohol, which I would highly recommend once you're doing your pee work because alcohol puts you in a hypnotic trance of low density. It's called spirits for a reason. We use alcohol to distill, guys. We rip the spirit out of the darn plant and put it in your tincture. Pay attention. Do not drink during your pee work, all right? So you are going to plant and then you are going to practice. Practice, 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 practice. You act as if, basically, like, uh, uh, my stomach's getting big. I got a baby in there. But for the first few months, I have to have a baby in there where nobody can see it. Three months. Healing is in three cycles, guys. Three, six, nine, nine months, gestation. Hello. Okay, so you are going to practice. Practice includes discipline, routine, consistency. That's what makes a good parent, by the way. Okay. Then you're going to prep. That's when you go into your nesting. You're like, hmm, my soulmate would not like that picture. Get rid of it. Oh, I got to make some space in the garage. I got to make some space in the, in the house. I got to get rid of these so-called friends that are just dripping me dry. I got to leave that crappy job. This is where you start preparing, preparing. And then finally, play, which is surrender. Okay, I did everything I needed to do today. I did all of my to-do list. I did my tr my correct affirmation, which was embodiment affirmations. Try holding a plank for two minutes with your IMs. That'll be a whole different affirmation. <laughs> okay, so this is what we do in quantum fitness. We are constantly doing and under a state of hypnosis in your chosen IMs, which means every fitness program is your IMs, okay? Every ounce of body work that we do is your programming. I'm just holding space and keeping you accountable to extract your I am nots while we put your I am's in. Okay. So if you want more information about how to manifest with your peace, right? Because you're actually every single thing I just said is it's alchemy. It's plant, it's, it's farming. It's days of creation. It's the seven cycles of the human body, right? It's the seven cycles of your spirit. It's every single thing in captured into those peas, okay? Peas for planet, pure on planet P, okay? You are here to create heaven and birth it inside of you. And once you freaking plant that seed, you have to now deprogram yourself. Otherwise, you're going to feel like you're in split worlds. Like, you're going to feel like you are literally in the middle, and the most hypnotic state that you could ever be in is the threshold between the brainwave of theta and alpha. Alpha is learning and theta is like, I don't care what happens. 
And when you are in that threshold and that brainwave right there, anybody can do anything to you and you will believe it as you will fight for death for that. How do you think that that freak Hitler got so many people to do his dirty work? How do you think that the darkness and the death that's rolling around out there is getting you to, did you know that if you are in fear, you're doing the dirty work for this hypnotherapist that's running these planets? And there's 13 families that are full of them. And hypnotherapy is the first thing that they teach the Freemasons. Come on, you can't make this stuff up. So you've got to fight, fight with fight, which means you fight with love. Okay, they're hypnotizing me. I'm going to become a hypnotherapist. All right, I'm going to hypnotize myself. I'm going to help other people. Okay, and this is what I've been doing last this last year in my divine feminine because I have been acting as my masculine because that's what I was hypnotized into as a child to stay safe. And it took me almost six full months of deprogramming to move back into my feminine energy. All right. And, and not that I didn't look feminine because I was, you know, wearing the mask, but I was literally mentally tougher than any man I had met to date up until about six months ago. So. You see, so you could be under a hypnosis and not believe you are. I can't be hypnotized, right? Well, you can be hypnotized as long as the 75 trillion cells that you have are running your hypnotic programs from the past. If higher self is driving your vehicle, right? You live in your own world. You don't care what anybody is doing. You don't care how you look. You don't care what people think. All you care about is your joy and the people that you love around your joy. All you care about is harmony. All you care about is kindness. All you care about is fun. All you care about is play. And somehow that pays your bills because higher self is a very big vibration that can ricochet and embody and influence positive, positive reality with confidence, with tone of voice, with threshold, with reach. Okay. So pay attention to where you are hypnotized and stop doing law of attraction affirmations and start to study your personal vibration. My personal vibration is going to be found in my behavior. Okay. It's going to be found in my thoughts, in my actions, in the lack of motivation, in the motivation, in my addictions, in my suffering, in my dreams, in my lack of dreams. You've got to start asking yourself the questions because you're under hypnosis unless you say what would it be like if we didn't act like that did you know that asking yourself questions is the fastest way to unhypnotize yourself and this is why when you have a therapist or you have a counselor or you have a mentor or you have a whatever i am alchemist then we are asking you questions because we are working for you to pay attention to your own hypno, hypno, hypnotic state that you're in Okay, stop fighting against your reality. It's a movie playing. You're going to go punch an actor on the screen. Stop playing in virtual reality and start playing in the lab. Imagination, right? Your frontal lobe, your frontal cortex energy does not come online until the ninth month of pregnancy. So, which means that for nine months, you are under hypnotism of your mother's feelings. Sorry, right? You are literally hypnotized and in the flow of her feelings, her cravings, her desires. And so once you're birthed and you get your own imagination, your own I am, right? It might not be stronger than mom's pull. And you might think that you are wanting what she wants until you become a sovereign being. So the best thing that you could do for yourself this year is to become unhypnotized by the matrix, which means if you are in fear, you're hypnotized, okay? If you're acting with guilt and shame, because those, did you know that fear is not even emotion that was part of the human makeup? Danger was, danger, yeah, ooh, that's hot, okay. Fear is a construct, it's a hypnotic state to get you under control. If I can get you to fear something, I can get you to do something. All right. And this is why when I a Kundalini cracked open and I realized I could read minds, I thought I could do this for good or I could do this for bad. But luckily, I was not allowed to do anything for bad. And I have only been playing for, you know, team team light. Right. My uh, Jedi master training. OK. Even though Darth Vader might be my dad, I'm still working for the light and I have never been able to use my powers of understanding mental 
vibration or negative energy since 2009. So before that, sorry <laughs> if I hurt you before that, right? Because that's before I knew. Now, what I'm saying is, is that you are not as private as you think. And when you are in fear, you are completely controllable, 100%. So that's why when you're at night, you may not think that getting older is fear. But if you're ladies, if you're worried about getting older and all of a sudden you see someone who says, this is going to turn the clock back 10 years, you're buying it. Everything is hypnotic symbols. Did you know the McDonald's arches because your brain sees upside down? It's boobs. It means I will nurture you. Hello? Symbolism, guys. The color yellow, the color orange, the color red. Have you noticed all the fast food restaurants are those colors? Because it makes, it's the lower chakras that are starving for nurturing and love. Right, of course you probably knew that. But I'm just saying every single thing is hypnosis. And if you are very awake, but then find yourself falling asleep in fear, pay attention to those places where you go to fear because that's where you're under hypnosis. If you want to join us in the non-duality class, I highly recommend it. It's never too late. You start, you do it at your own pace and your own time in your own way. You can attend the live classes. You can attend the archive classes. If you still want to get into our divine feminine class that we are really, really, really de-indoctrinating women. Okay. You are God in human form. If you do not think you're worthy, you should probably be in that class because you are. And you have a giant magnet sitting inside of you that is way, way bigger than masculine energy that can just create a nice little receiving life for you so that you don't have to work so hard. You never want to do work so hard. All right. If you want to attend a, a, a retreat, I've got a retreat in Kansas coming up and that is going to be, I believe in June. It's on our website, jessicaalstrom.com. Um, if you are looking to join us in the blue lagoon, um, I have one spot left for our divine reclaiming of our feminine um, energy. Of course, we're going to the blue lagoon because hello, why not? We deserve it, right? Um, and then we've got lots of other stuff going. I've got my alchemy classes there. I've got private mentoring, which I highly recommend if you are like ready to cross the threshold, but you're finding yourself in fear a lot. Fear is so last season, people. Come on. You really deserve to be on this journey. And no, I'm not hypnotizing you. I'm trying to unhypnotize you by putting this power back into your purpose. There's another P for you. I hope you enjoyed this. If you liked any part of this or just enjoyed my humor, go ahead and subscribe um, and like and share. Uh, and I will make more videos like this if I get positive feedback. So thank you guys again.